Yeah, so one thing that's really important about a bus like this is we've got to make sure that only one of these uh, things that's connected to the bus is, is outputting something at any point in time. Uh, because if, you know, if, for example, both of these uh, modules are outputting to the bus at the same time, uh, then you know, we're gonna have some sort of problem here. <laughs> you know, if, if, for example, on this blue, on this blue uh, bit here, if A is outputting a zero and C here is outputting a one, then we're getting a one and a zero both output onto the same, uh, the same line at the same time. Uh, and then it's, it's not clear what the, what the inputs are, are gonna be. So to really understand uh, better, you know, what's happening when we have all of these outputs connected essentially together in this way, it's useful to look at the, at the actual output stage of, of a gate because you know, ultimately this, these connections are coming out of logic gates, right? Because you know, whatever's going on inside here is, is just a bunch of logic gates. So if we were to look inside um, a typical logic gate, you know, there would be some you know, series of transistors and things that, that you know, kind of do, do whatever logic operation that the logic gate is, is, is supposed to do, whether it's the AND gate or whatever. Uh, but then there's typically an output stage that looks something like this in front of the actual output of a logic gate. And usually there's these two transistors. Um, and if this top transistor is turned on, then, the, the, then you know, current can flow from the voltage source uh, through and to the output. And so the, essentially the, the gate can be sourcing current uh, you know, that goes out the output. And, and that's you know, typically what it does when the output is a one or when the output is on. Alternatively, this, this transistor could be off and this transistor here could be on. And uh, you, know, you can think of it as connecting the output to ground, or you can think of it as the output is able to sync current. Uh, and that and that's represents sort of the, uh, the zero state of the, of the output. So another way to look at that is like this, where <clears throat> when the gate is on, you know, there's this resistor that essentially connects you to the output. So sort of a resistor goes to the output. Um, and then on the input here, what that means is that current can flow out of this output and then to ground in the next gate. And so current flowing in this direction is, is seen as a one. Uh, alternatively, if the bottom transistor is turned on, then we have this scenario here where current can be, uh, can be sunk into, essentially, into that output uh, to ground. And when current is flowing this way, we, we consider that a zero. So if we come back to, to this bus, essentially when you know, these outputs, if, if A is outputting you know, some pattern, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, for example, really what it's doing is it's saying, okay, this pin is gonna sink current, this pin is gonna source current, this pin is gonna sink current, this is gonna source current. Um, and so you know, on an input, you're gonna see current going one way or the other, and that's how the input is going to determine whether it's a one or a zero. And so essentially current will be flowing this way or current will be flowing this way. Um, and that's fine until you have, you know, two things trying to output at the same time. You know, so if, if for example, you said, oh, okay, well, C is not gonna do, is not gonna output anything, so it'll set all these to zero. Well, that's no good because what that means, if you're setting all of these to zero, uh, that means that it's going to it's going to sink current, uh, and so if you have um, you know a one here, you're actually going to get current flowing out here and, and into the output here. And that's not really what you want. Uh, you you really want these to be essentially disconnected, and so there is a way to do that. Um, where this gate, rather than turning on this transistor to output a one or this transistor to output a zero, if you don't turn on either transistor, uh, then the output is not going to source current or sink current. And so essentially you're not going to get a zero or a one, you're just gonna kind of have this output disconnected almost. And if you didn't understand anything that I just said <laughs> in, in terms of sourcing or sinking current, that, that's okay. Um, a better way or maybe a simpler way or a, a sufficient way uh, to think of this is you can think of a gate uh, in, this, in this way. Um, so instead of thinking in terms of what transistors are turning on and off, if you think of it like this, where you have an input coming in, and this is just a simple buffer, you know, whatever the input is, the output's gonna be. Um, the input you can think of as just controlling a switch. And so if the input is a one, then the switch is, is up in this position and you get five volts coming out. If the input's a zero, then the switch is down in this position and you have essentially your output connected to ground. 
So you could sync current, or you could just think of it as the output is at zero volts. But what we could do is to sort of, uh, you know, as, as an easier way to think of the scenario where both of these transistors are off, we could think of having an enable input. And if this enable input is a one, then it kind of closes this switch, it connects the output. And if the enable input is a zero, or if it's off, uh, then we can think of this switch as being open, and we can think of the output as being completely disconnected. And that's what we want, is we want these outputs, you know, if, if, this, if this particular register is not enabled, we want those outputs to be disconnected. We don't want them impacting, you know, some other data that's being transferred on the bus. And so, fortunately, they make uh, gates like this. They're called tri-state gates, or, uh, uh, yeah, typically called tri-state gates because they have three output states. There's a zero or a one or... Um, a, a disabled or, or a you know, sort of a not connected. Uh, sometimes you'll see it referred to as high impedance or high Z or something like that. Uh, but you know, basically this is this is considered a three state uh, a three state gate, um, and this is a pretty common symbol for such a thing. You have an input. This is a buffer, just an input and an output. But then you have this enable coming in the side here. And so an example of this that we'll use uh, in, our, in our registers is the 74LS245. And you can see it's got, it's got a bunch of these gates in here, but um, you know, what, you, what you should notice here is you can see you have an input that comes in, and then you have an output that goes out, uh, just like any buffer. But you have this, this third uh, enable pin, and it goes over here. And there's a little bit of logic here, but essentially you have an enable input that's this E input uh, that, that enables this thing. And so by using this tri-state logic, it gets us essentially what we want. It gets us the ability to have this enable line for each of these uh, uh, modules that's connected to our bus, and we can have that enable line uh, low for all but one of these. And as long as it's low for only, or for, for all of them except for one of them, as long as only one of them is enabled, then there's only one thing that's going to be outputting either zeros or ones uh, to our bus. And so we won't have any you know, conflicts, uh, you know, on the bus. And then when some other module then reads the data on the bus, you know you're going to be getting the data from the one module that's outputting that data to the bus. So I know that's a ton of theory, and it's okay if you didn't, if you didn't catch all of it. Uh, but the important part here is, is this notion of a bus and how that works and how that gives us the flexibility to add lots and lots of different modules and how uh, when modules are connected to a bus like this, any module can talk to any other module. Um, and then as we start to look in the next videos to build one of these uh, registers, and a register is just going to be able to store data that comes in and be able to put that data back on the bus, uh, it's important just to, to understand how this works and understand that, okay, this thing is going to connect to a bus. It's going to have data. Data could be coming from the bus or data could be going to the bus, either way. Um, and if and that's controlled by these these control pins that come in, or these these control lines that are going to come in from somewhere. We haven't we haven't talked about where those come from or how how the the computer knows when to turn those on and off. And that, so if you, if that's a little bit of a mystery to you, that's fine. We'll get there. Um, but but essentially, we have an enable control line that says whenever that enable is high, then the data that's stored in here should be output to the bus. And of course, we have to make sure that only one of those enables is is high at any point in time. But we'll we'll get to that later. Uh, and then there's also a load uh, signal, and when that load uh, line goes high, then what that means is that on the next clock pulse, we have a clock input here, on the next clock pulse, it should read whatever's on the bus and then store that in, in the register. And so in the next video, we'll actually look in more detail uh, of, about what goes on inside this register and, and how to build one.